Hello, geographers. Today's case study um, comes under the topic of global hazards in OCRB, Geography for Inquiring Minds. The tectonic hazard will focus on Japan, the earthquake that happened on March the 11th, 2011. So the earthquake happened off the east coast of Sendai, affecting Fukushima, the uh, Fukushima Daiichi, the nuclear power plant. And it was approximately 220 kilometers north of Tokyo, the capital of Japan. It was a huge nine on the Richter scale earthquake. And it happened at 2.46 on Monday, March the 11th, 2011. The epicenter was 43 miles east of Toyoku, a depth of 20 miles. So it wasn't very um, deep. And the earthquake lasted six minutes and caused a tsunami wave that reached heights of over 40 metres. So what actually happened? So we know that Japan is located in one of the most active earthquake zones on Earth. We know that um, the Philippine and the Pacific plates are moving towards the much bigger continental Eurasian and North American plates. It's quite a complex tectonic setting where there is um, a, a triple junction. The movement can be around eight centimetres a year, so it is quite an active um, location. It's a destructive plate margin where a subduction zone has formed. The thin oceanic Pacific plate is being forced, it's subducted underneath the much thicker continental Eurasian plate. And you know that the oceanic plate is much younger than the continental plate. Friction has built up over time. And when this was released, it caused a massive mega thrust earthquake. The amount of energy released in this single earthquake was equivalent to 600 million times the energy of the Hiroshima nuclear bomb. So this is a diagram that if you were, um, if you remembered it, you could reproduce in an exam. And you can see that Pacific plate subducting underneath the continental plate, which is the Eurasian plate, deep oceanic trench that has formed. Um, and there were lots of aftershocks um, after the main um, earthquake. The largest earthquake recorded was nine on the Richter scale. Now, these were the short term effects of the earthquake. Now, I understand that there are a huge number of them and a bit of advice would be to take out the numbers and see if you can remember those and then pitch them with like how many people um, died, how many people were made homeless um, and so on. So the first of those short term effects was on people um, and they identified 15,894 deaths, but actually 2,562 people remained missing. We normally say it was around 18,000 people that, that died and 130,000 um, that were made homeless. There was a nuclear crisis, a nine meter high wave flooded the um, generators, um, especially at Fukushima, that was the most famous and people lost energy immediately. It was also a flood defense disaster. They'd spent billions of dollars um, on anti-tsunami defenses and they'd put them at heights of 12 meters, but the ground sunk and then the tsunami washed over them. 332,395 buildings were damaged, 2,126 rows, 56 bridges and 26 railways were destroyed or damaged. 300 hospitals were also damaged. This was widespread. Um, destruction and 4.4 million households were without electricity. In relation to the environment, there were lots of aftershocks, about 800 of those um, of magnitude 4.5 or over following the main earthquake. And then we know that the secondary effect of a tsunami happened with up to 40 meter high waves, devastating entire towns and the result of 18,000 lives being lost, caused a lot of damage and pollution um, which went inland six miles. There was nothing to stop it as well. The land was very flat, so it just the waves kept on rolling. Some coastal areas experienced land subsidence or subsidence as the earthquake dropped the beachfronts in some places by more than 50 centimetres. But then the longer term effects um, on people, the social, um, the first one is actually economic. The cost was huge. It was the most expensive natural disaster in world history, costing 235 billion US dollars. 
Only 58% of the people in the coastal areas following the tsunami warnings headed for higher ground, um, and that's a social um, effect. Nuclear power, the damage caused by the earthquake resulted in the meltdown of seven reactors and radiation levels at one point were over eight times normal levels. Um, the fishing industry was very damaged, people didn't want to eat the fish, and that was global. Transport. Japan's transport network suffered huge disruptions, as you've seen, and it took a long time to get those roads and railways mended and back up and running. Environmentally, the land movement, the quake actually moved parts of northeast Japan 2.4 metres closer to North America. 2.4 metres is quite a distance. And there were some coastal changes, a 250 mile stretch of coastline dropped by 0.6 metres, allowing the tsunami to overtop some defences and follow further inland. Now, it was managed in lots of different ways, and I appreciate there's a lot of information here. You could, if you wanted to, pause and um, note these down in um, a mind map or put them on flashcards, whichever way you'd like to manage it. But in the short term, the rescue services obviously reacted quickly and got to those affected areas, were able to clear roads, create paths very quickly using heavy machinery, remove the silt caused by the tsunami, because obviously it was traveling water, it wasn't, you know, it was very dirty. And um, the silt obviously made it very difficult to uh, recover the dead and count those bodies. Healthcare, lots of hospitals had been destroyed or damaged. So field hospitals and Medicines on Frontier went out and set up hospitals. Doctors and nurses were flown from all parts of the country and the world to help with those relief efforts. Over 300,000 people were left homeless and needed access to food, water and shelter. So the army helped to build those shelters very quickly. Um, the rebuilding of the worst affected areas began immediately and the government set up a reconstruction design council who had billion or trillions of yen to rebuild those houses. The original 12 meter tsunami barriers were replaced with ones that were higher, 18 meters high, um, but this perhaps wouldn't still um, protect them in future. The Japanese people tried really hard to get their lives back to normal um, and summer festivals continued as normal to build people's mental well-being. And the economic responses, many Japanese manufacturers were affected because they could not restart production and supply lines were damaged. It took about one and a half years for production to really get back to normal. Um, there was lots of international aid. The Japanese Red Cross received over $1 billion in donations. And they gave um, out 30,000 emergency relief kits and 40, 14,000 sleeping kits too. So there was lots of short-term management, but in the longer term, over 70 million pounds was spent on lasers to monitor. Remember, you can't predict earthquakes, but you can get a little bit of um, a signal that it's going to happen. Every year on the 1st of September, an earthquake and tsunami drill takes place to make sure that rescue and emergency services know how to respond and also the public and the community know what to do. There's also earthquake proofing the buildings. Billions of pounds have been spent making buildings more resistant using types of glass that doesn't shatter, weights in the building to counter the sway, shock absorbers um, in the foundations, and obviously setting up early warning systems. It's had a tsunami warning system since 1952. And there's a, a network of seismographs which will then feed that back and then send out those warnings. So hopefully you now know where your tectonic case study is located in Japan off the East Coast and what the causes were, that subduction plate boundary and the plates that are involved and how the earthquake affected people, the economy and the environment. And you can evaluate the success of the short term and the longer term management. This is an example of an exam question. Assess the technological developments used to mitigate the impacts of a tectonic hazard. Now, you'll notice that it doesn't say a tectonic hazard that you've studied in a place. However, there is so much that you can use from your Japanese um, earthquake and what te technology they have used to mitigate, to reduce those impacts. So pause the video here and have a go at that question using the notes that you have made during the presentation. This is the mark scheme. 
And you can see here it's split into three levels and that top level that you're aiming for marks six to eight. And you need a really high level um, of thorough analysis of the technological developments. So there's your assessment objective three and that's through well-developed ideas. So always ask yourself, so what? So that you write, so that. So, so what does that mean? And in your explanation, develop your ideas. So this is an example. Early warning systems involve automatic texts that are activated as seismometers to detect potential earthquakes. Although the technology only gives a few seconds warning, it can be enough for people to hide under tables, protecting themselves from falling rubble. The disadvantage of this system is very expensive and may be impractical for an LIDC, where not everyone may own such a device. That's an example of a well-developed idea. <clears throat> if you were to include three of those, you would hit those top marks. Here's an example of what an answer would look like. I'm gonna leave that for you <clears throat> so that you can read through that and perhaps compare your own answer and green pen your ideas using the mark scheme and this um, example. This answer received eight marks. Have a little read and see if you can do any better. Thank you.